Hi guys and welcome to Linux for Beginners. This is the series where a beginner like myself talks you through some of the uh, useful and just generally interesting things about Linux and how to make use of it, especially as your sort of main operating system. In this video we're going to be talking about dual booting, which ironically is the topic of basically using Linux uh, less than you normally would, but the point is that a lot of people want to uh, use Linux for just the fact that it's open source, it's not as invasive, it's not as creepy, and it's a little bit more advanced in certain areas with a lot of uh, very interesting functionality, but they still want to be able to play their games and use uh, apps that aren't currently available and compatible with Linux, even through stuff like Wine, uh, on uh, their set, you know, the same PC. But they don't have two graphics cards, or you know, aren't capable of running IOMMU pass through and all that sort of stuff to do a virtual machine. So hopefully, in this video, we'll explain the uh, main differences between uh, you know virtual machine pass throughs and stuff like that, and uh, dual booting, the different ways you can do it, and how to set it up, and uh, whether it's worth it or not. Starting off with how to do it, it's actually pretty easy. The first thing you'll need is a copy of Windows 10 or whichever Windows version you want to install and make sure that you have that on a bootable USB stick. Something like Rufus.io uh, is a really good tool to make that happen and obviously there are plenty of ways to obtain uh, a copy of Windows 10 or really anything else. And also uh, the, there's kind of a couple of main ways that you can dual boot. The way that I currently do it is actually having two separate drives in my system uh, and then you can either just leave them connected and use the BIOS to select which one you want to boot to or you can obviously disconnect and reconnect the drives but that one's a bit more hassle. But the main way that most people are going to be doing this is just installing Windows onto the same drive that Linux is already installed on. If you actually don't have a Windows installation or you currently have a Windows installation and you're thinking of switching to Linux as your main but leaving your Windows installation for your games and stuff like that, then you can actually do this even easier by just installing Linux alongside the Windows partition that you have, especially if you're, uh, you know, your main drive is uh, decently sized. If you already have Linux installed, I would be very careful when installing Windows to have a custom installation option. It's, you can either use Express Settings or Custom Installation uh, and go with that one and select your main drive but partition it so you have some space for Windows but you're not deleting your Linux partition. That is obviously very important to so do with that one in mind. But otherwise, once you've installed it, generally speaking, the uh, Linux uh, bootloader will give you uh, an option to boot either to Windows or to Linux. Though I believe Linux should always be default, which is obviously very nice and I think you can change that around as well so if you want to boot to Windows in that uh, specific case you restart your PC and select Windows and then it will boot to it no problem. So what's the main difference between this and virtual machines running Windows with IOMMU pass-through using KVM and stuff like that? Well the main thing is that with IOMMU pass-through you need two graphics cards whether it's your Intel integrated and your dedicated graphics card or whatever else you do need two graphics cards you need either two monitors or one monitor with dual inputs and you have to switch them around you also have to have Synergy or two mice and keyboard boards uh, to be able to actually make that happen so it is a bit of a complicated procedure that one so dual booting is a little bit more simple although it's a lot less seamless. Dual booting is a lot less seamless you do have to still restart every time you want to play games or do anything uh, on Windows rather than on Linux and it means that you do have to shut down your PC first and obviously stop everything you're doing on Linux to then go play uh, a game unlike obviously if you're just playing uh, on games on Windows anyway you can leave browsers and notes and uh, you know pretty much anything open and still have have your games available uh, just with a couple clicks so there is still that sort of uh, issue the other issue is that you're still technically using Windows uh, obviously you get to choose a little bit more of what you're doing with it and obviously Linux is gonna be your main in this case but you can take the more pragmatic approach of obviously using Linux for most things but then stuff that just doesn't work you can switch over to Windows for but again you are still using it and some people just really don't like using Windows anything other than a virtual machine or you know wine compatibility layer so just bear that one in mind so is it worth it? Well I think this is quite a personal question and I would really like to hear from anyone who is dual booting in the comments down below. Is it worth it for you guys? Do you use Windows applications on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? I'd be really interested to hear what you think. The things that I would think about if I was considering switching to uh, dual booting and Linux on a, a daily basis is are you going to be using Windows based applications that you can't get Linux alternatives for on a daily basis? If you are, stuff like the Adobe CC Suite for example, which is what I use on a, a very regular basis to edit all these videos videos. 
I think for me that's one of the main reasons that I'm not going to be switching to Linux on my sort of main machine, although I will be continuing to use it on many other machines. Uh, for me that's kind of the, the main issue, the main drawback. If you're willing to sacrifice the uh, sort of ease of use of being able to just click and launch games and have to restart every time, then it might be a little bit more worth it, and especially if you hate what Windows is doing right now, especially with all the privacy stuff and all that jazz, then it could be very interesting. So I think that wraps it up for this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments down below, and I've really I very much appreciate uh, all the comments that I've had on the previous videos uh, explaining things in a bit better detail, things that I don't necessarily understand just yet. So it really is very valuable for me. So thank you very much for all the, the very kind and uh, helpful comments. And of course, if you are someone who dual boots and uses Linux on a daily basis, I'd really appreciate some of your thoughts on this video and generally the, the series and obviously actually dual booting in the comments down below as well. I think it would be very valuable for the audience to watch. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, that's kind of it really. I'll leave the rest the series if you haven't seen any other videos feel free to take a look at those including the two command line basics videos uh, also feel free to subscribe and i'll leave another video over here for you but uh yeah, I guess that's kind of it. Um, I'm kind of uh, slowly working through some topics. If you've got any suggestions for videos, then let me know in the comments down below as well, as I'm uh, still open to plenty of other options as well. So uh, yeah, otherwise, thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.